Hello, welcome to this episode of the Mayhem Lab. Today I wanted to look at the implant procedure for the first four implants that I have. Okay, so in this episode I wanted to take a look at the implants that I currently do have. Um, big warning first before we start, this uh, video does contain images of me getting uh, poked with some needles, uh, rather large needles, so if you're a little bit squeamish, you might not want to watch this one. Uh, there's also a little bit of blood, not uh, not anything major, but uh, there's, there's a few drops. Um, also, big note that this is for educational purposes only. Um, I do not recommend or endorse uh, imp self implanting um, chips. It certainly can be done as we're about to see, but uh, it's not a recommended method. Uh, it's recommended if you want to receive an RFID or NFC chip implant that you go see a, uh, a professional in your area. Uh, there are websites out there um, to, to locate one. Unfortunately, where I live, uh, they're several hundred miles away and it's about a six or seven hour journey to, uh, to get to a place um, to get the implant and then another six hours back, right? So it would be a very, a very long day. Uh, I've, so therefore I've chosen to um, do the unimproved method of doing it, uh, doing it by myself and uh, with some colleagues. So what I wanted to look at today is four implants that I have. My first implant being an RFID chip and then I have three NFC chips. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, what we did during the process, we actually recorded uh, all four of them. Um, luckily I was uh, planning ahead for that. So here are the, the implants, uh, the actual implant processes. So the first one, like I said, is RFID. Uh, this one was done, I believe back in 2016, if I remember correctly. Um, this one was done by a friend of mine, Adam, while we were at the office uh, one day. One problem that, that you'll note that we end up having during this Im implant is the um, we forget to take off the safety guard. Uh, so the syringes uh, with the needles with the chips inside of them come with a um, precautionary piece of plastic that sits between the syringe, um, the needle, and the plunger. As you can see, Adam is unable to push it, um, discovering that uh, that it was actually still the safety safety guard was still in, intact. Um, interestingly enough, if you take a close look, uh, it's actually kind of clear, clearish white. Um, that's why we didn't really see it, didn't, didn't pay it much attention. Uh, it's worth noting that all the other implants that I've worked with uh, since this come with some kind of colored um, safety stopper, if you will. So red or orange or blue, I've seen them. Um, so this hasn't been an issue going forward. It was just the, the first time um, beginner mistake, I guess. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely definitely a lesson learned. So that one um, went into the webbing in the left hand, uh, very common place for uh, the chip implants. Um, that's the most common recommended place for the implant. Uh, it went in just fine. Um, it was a little bit of a smaller gauge needle. Um, I should go back and measure them and find out exactly what they were, but uh, it, was, it was pretty straightforward, pretty easy. The next implant, uh, Adam again assisting me. So this one is actually on the underside of my left hand. Um, this one is a, a larger gauge needle. Uh, I wanna say it was a 12 or 14 gauge needle. Um, so the, the diameter of the chip is a little bit larger. This one did hurt um, quite a bit because of where it was implanted. So the side of the hand um, is, uh, is a little bit thicker skin, so it was harder to get implanted there. But, uh, you know, the idea behind having the implant on the side of my hand is so that way I could, um, you know, develop something or have, a, have something that I could walk up to and set my hand onto and then um, activate it that way, right? So like an authentication method of some kind or whatever I wanted to read or write. Um, so yeah, that, uh, that went in a little bit rough, but unfortunately this is the one that is no longer working. Um, basically what happened is it's a two kilobyte um, chip. And after trying to write um, just under two kilobytes, I think it was like 1.8 um, kilobytes of data, it, um, it didn't seem to accept it. Um, after reading it, I can only read the first 144 bytes off of the chip. So uh, it still technically works, but it doesn't have the capacity that it should have anymore. 
Uh, so I'm trying to uh, to do some homework on that and trying to figure out exactly uh, why why it doesn't work and uh, you know what what the issue is. The um, I've also chosen not to get it out. Uh, we actually did try. Um, I have a blog post about that of us trying to get it out, but um, decided not to get it out anymore because of its location. It sort of migrated a little bit and it's very close to the nerves and tendons uh, of my pinky. So. It's not causing me any damage. It doesn't hurt. Um, I actually forget about it most days because uh, I don't use it. So it's just it's just there. The third implant that I've got is known as the Vivoki or Vivoki, excuse me. The Vivoki was uh, installed professionally at um, the Body Hacks Conference in 2019. Uh, so this one you'll see is on the top of my left hand. Uh, this one also went in fairly fairly easily. Um, was a professional doing the installation, so uh, there was no issues with it uh, with it going in or, or being implanted. Um, yeah, it was actually, I think, the quickest implant. Uh, I think it was about 20 or 30 seconds, and I was done. So um, the fourth implant I have, you'll notice here, is another NFC chip, um, but it's in my right hand. I went back to the uh, webbing between the thumb and index finger, uh, this time on the right hand. This NFC chip is actually, I got this one to replace the other one in the left side of my hand. So this one also is a two kilobyte um, capacity chip. Um, but I decided to be adventurous here and do a self installation because I wanted to see how that uh, how that worked or how well it would work. Um, it actually went fairly well. Uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit interesting sensation uh, sticking yourself with such a large needle that uh, you may not necessarily be used to doing. Um, Another thing that I found difficult during this procedure is I was I was very conscious. I wanted to get it as close to the surface as I could. So um, you'll, you'll actually see that's Kevin there helping me out, Kevin uh, pinching my skin so I could put the needle in. One of the problems was I was actually inside of the skin layer. So I was uh, going you know horizontally through the skin instead of underneath it. So after we figured that out, we uh, may backed it out a little bit and then went underneath the skin and then it, uh, it worked just fine. Another problem we ran in with this is I think when we were taking off the safety guard, um, I don't know if you can see it in this picture, but the, the plunger is sticking out uh, quite far. So the issue is I was unable to actually plunge it in. So lining it up, getting it straight, you'll see how deep the needle is actually in there because I wanted to make sure that it was exactly where I wanted it. That's a good shot. So the plunger you'll see is sticking out quite far. So I think when we were taking off the safety guard, um, obviously lesson learned from the first time, it, uh, it the, the plunger actually kind of slipped out the back a little bit um, and that caused a problem because now I'm unable to plunge it. So uh, luckily uh, Kevin was there to, to assist um, and you'll see here that it takes him quite a bit of force to actually push that plunger back in. So there's a little uh, little knob system that um, prevents it from uh, sliding all the way out and in. So it just was like a little little bump it had to get over. Uh, and that was it. So once we got that solved, um, you know, the, the implant was finished. So uh, it was pretty much that easy um, as far as implanting goes. Uh, but like I said, obviously not recommended to do it yourself. Uh, certainly it can be done. You know, we just saw that. Uh, you can do it. Uh, the kits that you can buy from like Dangerous Things or Cyberize.me come with pretty much everything you need. Uh, the syringes are all sterilized. The chips are sterilized in there. They're preloaded. Um, comes with, you know, the gloves and the, the um, wipes and everything like that. So you can, uh, you can do it yourself. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in, in doing it, um, I would recommend obviously seeking a professional, check it out. But uh, I'd be curious to know what you think. Um, did you, are you interested in getting a chip? Um, are you against getting a chip? What's, uh, what are your reasons for wanting one? Do you have any now? Um, I'm kind of interested in what people think about uh, having the technology implanted in their body and, and see where that conversation goes. Um, hopefully in future videos, we're gonna actually see some um, more installations and uh, uh, start working on um, reading and uh, writing to these chips and, and look at that technology and see how that works. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching this episode of the Mayhem Lab. If you've enjoyed this video, please click like and we will produce more videos like this one. Also, please consider clicking subscribe so you don't miss our latest content.